we are live. Yes, so, welcome to Fountain and the Winter Soldier, Episode 4, Thoughts. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode, and I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by new rock star, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, and Screen Crush. Now, I... I think Screen Crush is the one with Ryan Airy, I want to say his name is. I just, I don't think I've mentioned it before. If I have, it bears repeating. I really love his Your Mom jokes. I They make me laugh way more than they should. Now, let's see. Yeah, so a, a quick thing I wanted to note that I didn't write down. So I'm saying it so I don't forget to. I'm really loving how... I mean, in general, the MCU makes such great use of the the shared continuity. But something, you know, the, the, a lot of the comics have the shared continuity too. Something you can do in movies that you can't in comics is score. And we've seen it in WandaVision. We've seen it in this. We've probably seen it in some of the movies. I can't quite place an example right at this moment. They'll use music that we've we've heard before, you know, in this, and I think also at the tail end of episode three, we had the the music, the, uh, I guess Wakanda main theme, it's called, or something like that. You know, at the, at the end of WandaVision, we had the Doctor Strange music when she's sitting there getting her Doctor Strange on, you know, studying using her, ah, what's it called again? The, the... Ah, yeah, you know, the post credit scene at the very end of the last episode of WandaVision. The, the, um, yeah, I, I really feel it, it adds a lot. And that's the kind of thing you can only do with a shared continuity. You know, you can't, like, hypothetically, let's say that, you know, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, right now I'm not spoiling any specific. You know, let's say in X-Men continuity or... DCU continuity. Let's say that they introduced characters we hadn't seen before, and to sort of signify they were different, they would use a specific musical theme for them. It just wouldn't have the same effect if it's the first time we see them, the first time we hear that music. But, you know, for with this and the detail that some of the time they speak, uh, I guess it's just called Wakandan. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't mean any disrespect. I, I, I think that might be what it's called. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think that might be all that I had that I hadn't written yet. So, specific notes. We opened in Wakanda six years ago, Ao and Bucky, and she says the words to trigger control of him. I really love the intercut clips of Bucky in Winter Soldier mode. Very effective. And one of the Easter egg, at least one of the Easter egg people pointed out, we actually also see... Bucky fighting Tony. That wasn't under Winter Soldier control, but it's something he feels guilty about that happened as a consequence of him doing things under Winter Winter Soldier control. Yes, there we go. So, so that's a great sort of and and you know these three people point out he didn't get a chance to apologize to Tony. You know, he didn't get a chance to try to make amends, which we've seen him do on this show. He wants to make amends, but there really wasn't any time, you know, how, when would he have had the time? Like, basically, after their fight at the end of Civil War, the only time they're in the same place at the same time is briefly during the the climactic battle and endgame, and it's not exactly a great situation for the two of them to have a personal conversation. You know, there's kind of bigger stuff going on. But yeah, I really love that, you know, the the straight up, they have the test, you know, and, and Bucky is like legitimately scared that, you know, he's going to go back under and AO says, I won't let you hurt anyone. And I mean, I don't know if she says 
she personally won't, or if there are other Dora Milaje around. Let's be honest, even Ao by herself is such a badass that she could take out Bucky. You know, it, it'd be like, you know, I, I mean, I could send this tweet afterwards, but I, I, you know, I'll tweet with my left hand, I'll kick Bucky's ass with my right. That's, that's fine, you know, but just, yeah, and, I, yeah, I really love that there is a straight-up test. It's not just they assert to Bucky, you know, the, the mind control is gone. They straight-up, they prove it. And, you know, she says, you are free. With purchase of one more expensive item. And one of the Easter egg people pointed out, that is what Carly wants to hear, you know, that, that she and her people are free. And, yeah, you know, I really like the, the, I, I, have we seen, I don't think they've shared the screen before the end of the episode, before this one, you know, so I like that AO, yeah, I mean, Shuri was the one who deprogrammed him, and obviously he's also devoted to Shuri. We, you know, we saw the, uh, Black Panther, post credit scene, you know, she, she refers to him as Sergeant Barnes, and he, you know, he's like, Bucky, you know, you can, you can call me Bucky, I trust you, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm not saying that only people you trust know your first name, or, I mean, technically his first name is James, I'm saying he's, it's different, he's, he's not a person who trusts very many people, and him saying, you can refer to me as, you know, we're, like, it, it's a more familial relationship. Anyway, I, but, but yeah, you know, so, so we go from six years ago to right now, and, you know, the, the, yeah, she, she straight up points out, you know, Zemo murdered T'Chaka, the man who chose us, chose me to protect him, you know, the, it's personal. It is, like, there's no real, you know, she, she wasn't, like, sent because it's in the rule book somewhere, there's a law. No, she despises Zemo and feels legitimately betrayed that Bucky would ever work with Zemo, that he, that he would trust him even a little bit. And I like, you know, Bucky speaks Wakandan to Ao and says he's a means to an end. And that's, that's a great kind of, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if you spend a long time in another country, you know, un unless you make serious effort not to, or, you know, perhaps, I mean, some people have a lot of trouble learning languages. I would know I'm one of them, but there's a pretty good chance you're going to pick up the native language. And that's also, you know, sort of him saying, you and I know each other. You know who I am. I'm not doing this. You know, I, I didn't take this decision lightly, you know. And, you know, and she gives him eight hours and calls him White Wolf again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Bucky immediately tells the others about Ao. I don't know why I doubted that he might I don't know I guess I'm just I'm so used to American produced action movies where for no reason the the like you know for like forced drama you know of course he tells them why wouldn't he he trusts Sam and he's warning Zemo you know and you know because like Zemo might be like I just, I can deal with these two, and I can, I can, I can get in their heads. He's not gonna, like, I, honestly, there's some chance that he wouldn't have, like, I, I mean, he was, he went, like, down a, a sewer, uh, sewage, man, manhole thing, you know, there's some chance that he wouldn't have, if not for the Dora Milaje, you know, he, he feels like he can control the others, he's, he's got leverage, excuse me. And now Carly is making demands and says she will continue attacks. So she is, the, she is at this point a terrorist. And I hate how that word has been thrown around since the war on terror started. But I literally, 
I'm saying that's the dictionary definition. You know, she she's making threats and demands, and she's she as a civilian is making you know she's she's attacking non-military targets. That's that's a terrorist. You know, so they they very specifically made sure it, this is not just she's being referred to as a terrorist. She fits the definition. And so yeah, the the trio have a discussion. And Zemo talks about supremacy, and you know one of the one you know the the show is in part about white supremacy, but it is about other kinds of supremacy as well. And you know they are basically saying, you know, is isn't Carly a supremacist? You know she's not a white supremacist clearly, but. I mean, she is basically saying that the refugees, I'm sorry, the, the internationally displaced persons, the, the, you know, she's saying that they matter more than, you know, I mean, I mean, let's see, does she say they matter more than, like, uh, is, let's see, is native born, is that a, I hope that's not politically incorrect, I, I'm not trying to be politically incorrect, I, I just want to say, I think, uh, does she, does she say that, do you think, she definitely, you know, she is hurting the, the uh, GRC people, you know, she's, she's, you know, I mean, you could say that it's kind of a Robin Hood thing that she's taking the, the supplies that they're not using to help the people that that was allotted to, but she's also killing them, and and you know she's killing, she has killed some of them after they were already not a threat to her. You know she had tied them up. They're they're they can't they can't come after her, and she's still killing them. So yeah, and the but but yeah you know she's she's. She's not saying, I want the GRC to stop fighting internationally displaced people. I guess IDP. She's not saying, GRC needs to stop fighting IDP. They need, you know, they, they don't matter as much. You know, their lives don't matter as much as IDP safety. You know, and I mean, I have a lot of empathy for her and for her cause. But, I mean, that is kind of... Yeah, that that qualifies as supremacy, you know. I, I, they, the MCU is so good at this. They, they, they create these incredibly sympathetic villains who basically their cause is essentially just. It's that their methods are too extreme, you know. And and I'm not one of the people who think that uh, Thanos was, you know. I, I, everything I have to say about that. You know, Renegade Cut did an excellent job picking apart the the arguments there. So, but but you know, people like one second, Killmonger, for example, and you could also really understand Loki, especially in the first Thor movie. You know, maybe less so in Avengers One, but in that first Thor movie, I mean, he just wants for his father to appreciate him. You know, he. He's so tired of living in Thor's shadow, you know, so, so, but then he, he tries to kill people, he tries to commit genocide, you know, he's, he's way too extreme in his methods, but you can understand why he, you know, so, so, yeah. <laughs> Same still calls his dead aunt TT. I don't know 100%, but I'm guessing maybe her, let's see. First name maybe had a T in it, and so Auntie, or maybe it's just Auntie T T. Yeah, I I don't know exactly, but that's that's very sweet. That's you know he's he's not a he's not like this constantly really um, I don't know romantic romantically think ah. I I don't yeah I I hope you know what I'm saying what. When I use the, the term romantic, like he's rose tinted glasses kind of thing, you know, but 
he does still call his then aunt TT. You know, she would want that. And uh, yeah, that's <laughs> and and like for several, you know, he's like TT, TT, yeah, TT. What's your TT? And the, you know, they they have to really twist his arm to get him to to, to just refer to her as something less familial because they don't know what that means, you know. Turkish delights, irresistible. No matter how evil you might be, you can appreciate how delicious Turkish delights are. Wait, Turkish delight, I guess. There's no S. Uh, I, anyway. Seriously, if you haven't had them, I mean, okay, they're not for everyone. I think one of the Easter egg people said they were disgusting or something. Dude, more for me. Okay, that's... If you're not into it, I will happily take those off your hands. Or out of your hands, I guess. They're delicious. And the... Let's see. And, and, you know, an excellent argument. Well, you know, you have, like, some people saying, Ah, oh, if we, you know, if we allow Muslims to come into our country, they're just going to make things worse. Have you had Turkish food? Have you, have you tasted it? It's incredible. You know, even, like... It's so ridiculous to say, oh, they're going to make our culture worse. No, they're not. They're going to enrich it. That's like, it's, anyway, people who don't think immigrants make the culture better have not tasted food made by immigrants. That's, that's all I'm going to say. If, if you don't like any of it, if, if you say you don't like any of it, I'm sorry. I have a hard time believing that. Now, the, let's see. Yeah, and the, you know, the supporters of the Flag Smashers don't want to talk to Sam. I do really appreciate, you know, he's the one going in there, because that is, like, I mean, at the end of the day, Zemo and, and Bucky, you know, you could look at them and be like, I mean, it's not like they've never fought for the status quo, you know. Okay, so Bucky was under mind control for quite a bit of it, but, you know, Sam hasn't really fought for the status quo, has he? I don't... I'm, I'm not sure I would ever... I would say he ever really did. And he looks like them, you know? He's he's not this, you know, white American, you know? he He's a minority himself. He has a lot of empathy for their situation. I really appreciate how they're... It's, oh, man, can you imagine if this was just a bunch of white people going around telling other ethnicities how things should be i mean if it was made in the 80s that's probably what would be the anyway and right i uh, yeah i wanted to say specifically you know one of one of the idp specifically says he doesn't like the word refugee and i you know identifies as an inter you know they are not refugees they are internationally displaced people, and yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, I really hate when people use refugee as a dirty word. It's, there's, like, what do you want them to do? Like, it's not like they're, they're just freeloaders hoping to, to take advantage of the, the, you know, of their new country, that's, which is what conservatives make it sound like. No, they're literally fleeing violence, you know, it's, it's absurd to say that they should just stay and die. You know, it's, it's, I, I wonder, you know, what would conservatives say if, like, the, the, let's see, I mean, is there, let's see, who's, who's threatening white conservatives with violence? I mean, there was that time where some protesters drew in chalk outside of Tucker Carlson's home. That is very intimidating and not at all a thing that children do for fun. Thank you, Cody Johnston. The, the, but yeah, if, if white Americans were facing violence from someone other than other white conservatives, and people told them, well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? I, th I think you just have to stay put and accept the violence you're facing. Anyway. 
Zemo is going to lure in the kids with Turkish Delight. Very clever. And I didn't know this because I didn't watch those movies, but several of the Easter egg people pointed out that's apparently something that a villain did in at least one of the Narnia movies. So I'm not the biggest fan of fantasy, sorry. It has to be absolutely amazing, like Lord of the Rings, for me to watch it personally. And I don't know, I didn't hear that positive. Th so I didn't hear very positive things about those movies when they came out. So anyway, the the but but yeah, you know that's a that's a great illusion. And you know apparently you know he he's like I forget does he sing or does he just quote? I think he he sings some of Ba Ba Black Sheep, which is like about taxation, and that's why there isn't enough for some of the more, you know, some unfortunate people, and that's one of the things that bothers Carly, so. And, you know, he says, it was always my son's favorite, so it really, you know, he is, he continues to be driven by the loss of his family. Now, yeah, so Zemo gets information out of the girl by giving candy and appealing to her emotions. Getting a real panel wagon pedo vibe off him right now, which, yeah. I, I, other than that one little bit, I, I really love the portrayal of Zemo in this. And Zemo tells the kids not to trust Sam and Bucky, which, you know, that's a, that's a great way for leverage. I forget. Yeah, let's see, the Easter egg people, I think the Easter egg people said that that's, the, the villain in Narnia also says, now don't trust my enemy, only trust me. But, but yeah, it's, it's a great, ah, what's the word? You know, that's, that's what happens when they let Zemo do something by himself. He's going to manipulate the situation. And, yeah, so I, I try not to, like, just quote entire lines, especially monologues. I'm, I'm going to make a brief exception. For five years, people have been welcomed into countries that used to keep them out with barbed wire. There were jobs. People were happy to let them in. It was the entire world coming together. And then, boom, just like that. He goes right back to the way it used to be. That's, it's such a great, yeah. And, let's see. Uh, what was the other thing that I... I swear, I won't take forever remembering. The, the... Right. The, the... Ah, I guess, I think I'll maybe... Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about in my review, so... And I have to wait, what, two weeks? Sorry. The, the, let's see. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm really loving how it's handling this, you know, I, again, you know, movies made in the 80s, you know, oh, it's like they're, they're a dictator or a drug runner or, or something. And don't get me wrong, dictators and drug runners are awful. But it's like, let's, let's, Let's try to have a dialogue. Let's try to have a conversation about why people, why why situations end up the way they do. You know, there's no dictator where it's just like, oh well, you know, one day it was democracy, the next day it's a dictator. Who who knew? Uh, unless they like did a coup or something. You know, so let's let's try to actually have a little bit of nuance and and try to you know it's it's i mean pointing to a country and saying oh they're you know dictatorship so it's fine to kill the people there because they're probably in favor of the dictators that's the kind of thing you're hearing like war propaganda that's that shouldn't be communicated in like anyway to keep my leverage you want to see what someone can do with some leverage and Sam calls Sharon, 
I may or may not have access to a satellite or two. That is the, the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, that's a, that's a great, and, and one of the Easter egg people said, this could be something that she, you know, like, she used to work for S.H.I.E.L.D., maybe that's how she got access to a satellite or two, or maybe she is working for the power broker and is using some of his resources to, yeah. And, right, and I saw at least one of these great people say they, I think it might have been Dan Casey of Nerdist, saying that he really hopes that the power broker turns out to be, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, um, Zola, in the robot body form. I would love to see that. I don't know if that's going to happen on this show, but I would love to see that in the MCU. The, they, they could make it work. They could make almost anything work. I mean, it's it's wild the kind of things they made work. And, like, the... the you know, yeah, and, and he pointed out the, the, the design for the Zola robot suit are seen in the first Avenger, and I forget if he said this, or it was something I thought of myself, but, you know, if, I, I may have heard someone else point out, but if they could back up Zola's brain in a computer once, then why couldn't they do it twice? Obviously, the one we saw in Winter Soldier is gone. It is just burnt metal at this point. There's nothing left. But why wouldn't they make another copy and, like, be, be, you know, running around, you know, trying to create that robot body for him so that he could be mobile again, you know? No, it, it would be way more useful if he could move around instead of being stuck in that, you know, there's no way they're moving that. All those machines that just... They're, they're not going to be able to move that. So I figure they put, that was the, that was like the, the prototype. That was the beta version. And, you know, they, they put the, they, they made a copy of that and hid in a, in a place like the, the Winter Soldiers, you know, until they were, well, okay, the Winter Soldiers were hidden because they couldn't control them. But the, how exactly did they get the Winter Soldiers back in their individual cryo. I guess maybe they managed to subdue them and carry them. Fair enough. That works. That works. You killed the golden goose. It's about to get real nasty. And, you know, Carla brings up, do you think I'm making a mistake? Making more of us. If you're doing something and it makes you scared, it's probably because it's the right thing. And he fought Nazis. And that is like, that is an interesting, because for sure some of the things that need to be done make us afraid when we consider doing them. But if you say that anything that scares you is the right thing to do, that is, no, there are some things that scare us because they are very much the wrong thing to do. But that's, again, you know, if, if that's how he views the world, then of course he's willing to do extreme things. You know, I, hmm. we didn't really see the transformation from like the last, you know, when, when, at the, uh, let's see, I don't remember exactly when it happened in the episode before this one, episode three, but at one point in episode three, Carly blew up, might have been an early scene, anyway, she blew up the, the place with GRC people, and he said there were people in there, and she's like, this is the only language they understand. And now he's completely, he's, he's gung-ho, he's behind her 100%. I don't know if we should maybe have seen the, the transformation into... I don't know. Um, the it might have been like some someone pointed out 
that the episode before this one, I have to admit, I, I didn't realize it until other people pointed it out, but they cut around a subplot. Like, apparently, originally, the whole Mama Danya thing, there was, like, a disease or something, a virus or something, and some people felt it was too close to corona. You know, I mean, when they originally made this, you know, they didn't know that corona was going to be, a, you know, at least not all the way back when they started making this. They didn't know it was going to be such a huge thing, killing, you know, <clears throat> over a half million Americans. I, I saw at least one of these straight people, one of these straight people say, you know, ah, it's just pretty, I mean, if it's in bad taste, keep, keep it out. You know, if, if it's going to make people really upset or depressed or something, I, I, you know, and they did a decent job cutting around it. You know, there are some lines spoken when we don't see the character talking so that they could cover up. And, you know, yeah, there's some there's some stuff that's trimmed down. I, uh, let's see, do I have anything else to say about that? It's actually, yeah, briefly, I was wondering a little bit, with Mama Donya be you know, with the, with the subplot there trimmed so much down in the episode before this one, I was wondering a little why keep any of it in, but in this one, burying Mama Danya is important, so they couldn't remove that. Now, if anything, that shield should be destroyed. And Walker and Lamar confront the trio. I, again, I really, really love that they are, you know, even by the end of this episode, they are still, John and Lamar want to work with Sam and Bucky. They don't want to be fighting them. You know, I, I really appreciate that they don't just make it, you know, they just start fighting them for no good reason. You know, they actually, they try to talk. And Sam and Bucky don't, like, shut down. They say, they explain why they disagree with them, what it is that makes them worry, you know, and, you know, I, I forget, it might have been, um, yeah, never mind, I, maybe I'll remember later, and Zemo spots something behind Walker and doesn't tell the others, and we do see a little bit after that it's, you know, it's one of the, ah, you know, it's it's the it's the girl he gave Turkish delight to, and they discuss tactics. I used to counsel veterans. This is my wheelhouse. My associate is just up ahead. And and Walker handcuffs Zemo, and it is you know again like you can really understand why the. Yeah, you get 10 minutes, then we're doing it my way. Once again, you can 100% see where Walker is coming from. You know, he is he is too brash, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's not like there's, I mean, they're, they have trouble tracking down Carly. They found her. They have a chance to stop her. And, you know, Walker hears Sam say, I'm going to talk her down. And he's like, she's killing people. She's a terrorist. You can't talk her down. Fine. You know what? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, and then we're doing it my way, you know. And, you know, as, as one of these great people pointed out, you know, John Walker is representing American foreign policy here. You know, just going into other countries and using violence barely caring about who he hurts as you know in in his you know yeah in trying to get to a terrorist war in real life sometimes it's just about securing access to oil but i really appreciate that and i i i don't like bringing up the dark side of tony stark all that much but i mean let's be honest at the start, 
he was, you know, I mean, I mean, yes, there was like, uh, what's it called? Collateral damage was brought up in Iron Man 1. You know, he's, he's careful to avoid collateral damage when he goes into Middle Eastern countries and starts gunning people down. But that's kind of, you know, that's, that's something you can do in fiction. That's not reality there's there's a ton of collateral damage that that's another I, i'm really not a fan of that euphemism the american military has killed murdered countless civilians and like i said some of the time it's not even to stop someone who's doing something wrong sometimes it's just access to oil but but yeah you know here john walker is representing america it's just you know, Steve was the idealistic version of America. The, the I forget, it's a shining city on a hill. And John Walker is, you know, the, the, he's, he's the Nixon America. He's the Reagan America. And that is, I, I, it's been a long time since I read about it in the comics, but as far as I understand, that is basically what it, you know, or you could compare it to the comedian from Watchmen, you know, going into, yeah, anyway, so, you know, yeah, this is, this is growth. The MCU is being more responsible with, with this sort of thing, and here's hoping that it continues to be that way, that they continue to show that, you know, America has to be careful when using military in other countries. And I'm just briefly going to... Yeah, sorry. So this is another monologue. I don't remember where I'm from. What I remember is being alone. Worse than being hungry. You're scared. I was is scared. I was alone until Mama Danya. And like she did for a lot of you, Mama Danya saved me. She clothed me, fed me, loved me. She told me that we have to do for each other because they won't. Ah, sorry, some of this is poorly written um, by me. The voice acting didn't pick up everything I said. Um, yeah, the, something's missing here. Anyway, they imposed struggle and hardship on us and then labeled us as criminals for pushing back. But the struggle is what brings us all together. People have nothing in common, but we are all simply one world and one people. So live accordingly. So again, you can really understand where she's coming from. And yeah, it's sadly true. Many, many people have been treated as just disposable, you know, a, a workforce for... You know, and then when they're not needed anymore, they're not treated with humanity anymore. We have a lot of sympathy for Carly, even as she is becoming more radical. This is going to end in heartbreak. And John is itching to go in there. He's just, he, he can't wait. I came alone. I just want to talk. I'm sorry for your loss. I know what it feels like to lose someone. And yeah, Sam really does empathize with Carly. It's not better if you're killing people. It's just different. And John is getting increasingly impatient and Bucky tries to stop him. And John claims Sam's blood is going to be on his hands and you know, one of the Easter egg people pointed out that is bitterly ironic because that is basically, you know, if John had taken more care, Lamar's blood wouldn't have, you know, yeah. Everything I do is to end supremacy. These corporations and the beasts who control them, they're the supremacists. And that's, yeah, very hard to argue with. Also, fun fact, if you haven't read the, the comics... One of the corporations she's talking about might be Roxxon, which 
if I recall, it might be a different corporation, but there's at least one corporation in the comics that is literally controlled by a beast. It's like a minute minotaur, I would say. So, you know, I'm, I don't think she's referring to that, but it's a ni nice little nod to comics fans, you know, because she's not saying that they're literally beasts. She's saying they behave like beasts, but yeah. I cannot imagine Zack Snyder's DCU having a hero actually trying to relate to the villain. And John and the others come in and Carly thinks Sam was planning on it. And, you know, the... And we see Zemo freed himself, and you know he he fires a gun at Carly, hits her several times, and she she seems like legitimately wounded, and you know she tries to go for the remaining serum vials, but yeah she's she's wounded, and you know he picks up one of the vials, and like we're supposed to were you know wonder is he a hypocrite? Does he want the serum? even though he's been saying so many things against the serum, you know, or is he working for the power broker? And this seems to pretty, you know, he, he throws it to the ground and starts, you know, stepping on one after another. And yeah, you know, the, the, I, I feel like this is a pretty significant, this is pretty significant evidence that he is not working for the power broker. The power broker wanted the serum back. He specifically wrote that, you know, you took something from me, I'm going to, wait, I'm going to take it back, uh, never mind. I'm almost certain the power broker wouldn't want the serum destroyed. Now, but, but yeah, I, I really like, you know, you see him smash one after the other, and then Walker throws the shield at Zemo's head, knocking him out. And then Walker spots the one remaining vial. And, you know, he, like, does a head turn, he picks it up, and it's it's such a great, like, Zemo was trying to destroy all of them, but he didn't have time to, you know, let's see, what were there, like, was it, uh, was it 12 or 8? One of those numbers was the amount of super soul, of, of the, of Flag Smashers who took the serum, the other is the remaining number, I forget exactly which, but, yeah. He didn't have time to, oh, well, I mean, he would have if he hadn't stood with one of them for several seconds for dramatic effect. You know, the, the, if, if he had just immediately started, you know, anyway. Right, and, and the, with the, the head turn thing, I want to briefly, you know, the, the, ah, uh, let's see, I think it's, it's Sam telling Bucky about, about Zemo, don't, don't listen to him. He's just going to get in your head. He's going to do that little head turn thing he does. And Zemo was doing the head turn, and he just, like, straightens up, like, crap. Well, they're on to me. And as John looks at it, I think some of the music playing is from Captain America 1. Maybe, like, Steve's theme, and he pockets it and doesn't tell the others. So it's this thing of, like... You know, that was, like, if not for the serum, Steve Rogers would not have been able to do what he did. And John Walker does hope that he could live up to Steve's legacy. But we, the audience, know that he probably won't be able to. And by the end of this episode, uh, yeah, for sure he can't. To find people that if I went somewhere else, I would have been taught to hate. Another excellent point. It's it's such a, yeah, you know, I, I do personally believe that some borders are necessary, but we definitely need to be more humane about people who cross the border. Yeah, it's, it's such a, such a clever, because it's absolutely true. There is... I don't think there's a single country in the world that hasn't been told to hate the people belonging to another country, at least one other country, you know. And, you know, like, like Carly points out, we're the same. 
we, you know, we're treated badly in, in, you know, regardless of which country we go to, because they think we, we, you know, we don't belong in their country, and that's, you know, there's no reason for us to fight each other. And the power broker sent Carly a text. He's getting his Brian Mills on, threatening to find her and end her. I do know who you are. I know what you want because you already took it. I have a significant set of skills. Skills that eventually the audience will know about once they know my true identity. If you give me back the serum now, we won't have a show, so please don't do that. And uh, from here on out, I'm going to try to find you and kill you. Toodles. We separate them, and then we kill Captain America. I, I want to, one of the Easter egg people pointed out that you know, the, the Carly's second in command basically said, you know, I used to look up to Captain America. And the final scene of this episode, he is looking up, you know, not looking up to, but looking up at Captain America. And Captain America is killing him. You know, something he would never have believed Captain America would be, would, would ever do. And Zemo's recovering, he's like, like ice on his forehead and drink in his hand lying on the sofas. It's kind of funny looking. And, uh, you know, let's see. Yeah, and, and Zemo needles Sam about the, I think it's the serum, not the shield. And, you know, it's just like the, the ah, what's it called? The, the thing of, one second. It's that thing of, yeah, yeah, and he, you know, he says, you know, would you have taken Super Soldier Serum if you were offered? And Sam, without hesitation, says no. And Simo admires that. You know, I forget exactly who it was, but someone pointed out that by the end of episode three, we're halfway through the show, and the main, you know, the, the two protagonists of Sam and Bucky don't yet have a relationship with Carly. And they, ex they they said that was a problem for the show, and they hoped, I think they said they hoped it would be better by the end of episode four. And, you know, yeah, they do now have a relationship. You know, Carly and Sam have had conversations. You know, they've talked ideology. He's tried to talk her down. She's tried to convince him to, you know, basically... Stop trying to stop her. Stop stopping! Now, let's see. And, yeah, Zemo tries to talk Sam into being against all super soldiers. Blood isn't always the solution. I am now ordering you to turn him over. And Sam tries to talk him down. And then Ao and other members of the Dora Milaje enter and... You know, more of the, the Wakandan music, and let's see. even if he's a means to an end, time, yeah, the time's over, time to take him back. And, you know, the, the uh, what's it called? I think, yeah, Sam tells John, you might want to fight Bucky before tangling with the Dora Milaje, and yeah, and, you know, John is like, I, you know, I, th I think it's supposed to be like a relating to or reassuring. He's like trying to put his hand on her shoulder. He's not like trying to like grab her or something. Just like, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. And it's like, oh, do not do that. Do not do that. And just, yeah, she start, you know, she attacks and, and she was just standing there, sipping, watching, just... <laughs> And let's see. Yeah, and, and one of, uh, is it Ao? I, th I think it might be about to stab John in the head. So Bucky steps in, and, you know, Zemo walks off, locks the door behind him, and Ao, like, 
presses the vibranium arm in specific places and it falls off. So that was like a, you know, yeah, the, the you know, we, what we give to you, we can take back. And, and a sort of, you know, yeah, that, I mean, she said, I'm not going to let you hurt anyone. Thus, you know, she, there wasn't any hesitation or any fear there. And probably part of it is that she could disable the arm. But yeah, you know, she, she was ready to stop. Bucky, if he, yeah. And Bucky reattaches the arm, and it, one of the Easter egg people point out, it does the thing that he did to, to, you know, to fix it in Winter Soldier. Was that after the, after Natasha threw one of those little electricity rings onto the arm, and it's, you know, had a little trouble, and so he pulls it off and does the, the thing. Yeah. There weren't even super soldiers. John is really starting to doubt himself. I have a bad feeling he's about to take the serum, and yeah, by, before the end of the episode, he, he does in fact take it. And it is, you know, he just... It's it's crushing to him. It's it's so... He feels so defeated, you know. he's He's like... I can't be Captain America if I don't have Super Soldier Serum, you know. I can't believe he pulled an El Chapo. Good reference. And John Walker signs a headshot for a young woman. How long till that gets annoying? You're just jealous that she didn't ask you. And and he's like, yeah, I, I've got some great headshots. I do a really cool thing, something like that. It's I, I really like the banter between the two of them. It it legitimately does feel like they've been working together for years. You know, I mean, when you really think about it, these are two actors. You know, they might have been working, they they you know maybe for weeks or months, but that's it. And they have to convince us that they've been friends for years. You know, and they work. It works. Great acting, great writing. And John Lamar talk about taking the serum, and I mean. John is practically asking for permission, you know, he's like, if hypothetically someone just like me had serum, would you tell that hypothetical person to take the serum or not? I'm just asking for a friend. And, you know, Lamar basically tells him exactly, you know, I mean, Lamar is basically paraphrasing. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. The, the, I love the character. I can't remember his name. Sorry. From the first Captain America, the doctor, you know, good becomes great, bad becomes worse. And John says the things he got the medals for were not right. Becoming Captain America is the first time he's gotten a chance to do something right. Yeah, definitely considering the serum. And again, I really appreciate, you know, to to a certain extent, you know, the, the movies, the, the MCU has criticized American military before, but I mean, this is very, you know, the, the yeah, so, so I, I really appreciate that they are, yeah. And Carly calls Sarah. I'm thinking if I should kill your brother. I thought I could trust him. Then it turns out he's working for your new Captain America. He's not my Captain America. My world doesn't matter to America. So why should I care about its mascot? Really great. And and it's such a, like, you know, she literally, that there's a very clear threat there. You know, she says, I know where you live. I could. I could show up and we could talk. I need to meet with Sam alone. I'm sending you my coordinates. Why me? I need you. I need him to know it's serious. Carly called Sarah. She threatened my nephews. And Sam and Bucky don their uniforms and go to meet Carly. 
and you know it, it is the you know she immediately says i told you to come alone and he's like you threatened my sister and my nephews you know i was going to ask you to join me or do the world a favor and let me go and john walker is on his way so a fight breaks out and the flag smashers got lamar and walker fights one of the flag smashers one on one clearly he has taken the serum I, I like the uh, oh never mind I already looked at that no uh, and Lamar is cutting himself free really loving seeing all the super soldier serum people fighting stay there what's with all the knives they just think it's knife to see you and, and Carly's just about to stab John Lamar stops her and she launches him into a pillar. It really looks like he's dead. This is going to push John over the edge. And John leaps out of the window, follows the flag smashers, and like the Easter egg people point out, the, the jump, you know, he, he uses, he like jumps through a window, uses the shield to, to land from a really high fall. So this is just like Steve escaping, ah, uh, one second, the shield headquarters, you know, after the elevator fight. And that was a very decisive, like, he could have chosen to give himself up. Because they get they have guns, they, they're they pointed, you know, they're, they're aiming their guns right at him. And he's like, no, I am going to risk my life to ensure liberty, you know. And John is, you know, he's, he's trying to get revenge. So it's, it's a great, like, parallel contrast. Where is she? He's a lot better at doing the Christian Bale Batman interrogation voice than Spider-Man in Homecoming. I'm not a girl. I'm a boy. I mean, I'm a man. And yeah, and and John already had the, you know, Carly's second second in command. Like, I mean, he's he's he can't really do anything. You know, he's he's yeah. He, he can't get free, but he hits him repeatedly with the shield. And, you know, as, as we, we haven't seen it, but, there, you know, various people, Easter egg people and such, have pointed out, he might have decapitated that guy. And that certainly would, like, when you look at the shield, the amount of blood there is, I'm not sure there would be that much blood on if he, like, if he hit him in the head really hard until he died there wouldn't be that much blood. But if he decapitated him, yeah, you know, it's it's like a, this is this is like a Kill Bill fight sequence amount of blood. We didn't see the spray. And this is also, I, have we ever seen that much blood in one spot? I, I guess, actually, yeah, to be fair, maybe. But it, it is very concentrated. There's a very concentrated amount of blood. And, yeah, and... People get it on camera. Captain America now kills hostages. I really appreciate the weight that it's given. And only right at the end do we see there is straight up blood on the bottom of Captain America's shield now. And yeah, just like WandaVision, the show just keeps getting better and better. I love every episode more than the one before it. So this episode breaks the trend of ending an episode uh, of the show on a dramatic introduction of a new character. And instead goes for a dramatic event. And I love it. Sharon could see John on the satellite, so I guess that means maybe there's a tracker in the shield or his helmet or something that it could recognize. I kind of love that one of the Dora Milaje members picked up Captain America's shield, and she actually, you know, she does the, she, she like, steps on the edge, so it goes, whoop, f uh, flying up into her hands, you know, and she only actually puts it down when you know, Ao specifically told her to, like, if Ao had just let it go, there's a chance that Dora Milaje member would have just walked away with Captain America's shield, you know. I also really love the, you know, I, 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 yeah, it's probably John Walker who tells them the Dora Milaje don't have, um, jur this is outside of the Dora Milaje's jurisdiction. Dora Milaje have, distinct, have jurisdiction wherever they act. That's a great kind of, and yeah, and 
I mean, that that really does track with with what you know the the Wakandans aren't really that concerned with jurisdiction the moment that it comes to to stuff like it's, yeah. So this episode was called "The Whole World Is Watching," and that is very true. The very ending of this episode, you know, everyone watches Captain America, and, and you know, one of the Easter, at least one of the Easter people also pointed out, it could also refer to how Carly is being watched by the whole. You know, the world is watching attentively, attentively, with with great attention. But yeah, you know, this is going to have consequences. Captain America's legacy has been tarnished with murder. You may not have agreed with everything Steve Rogers did, but you 100% cannot claim that he murdered a defenseless person. And in fact, this episode, when John is killing the Flag Smasher, the episode intentionally references the end of Civil War, where Steve has a chance to attack Tony's head with the, you know, the Iron He just knocked the Iron Man helmet off, and he raises the shield, and Tony, like, tries to cover his head, but instead, he knocks out the, the generator, powering the suit. John Walker could have simply taken in the Flag Smasher. He chose to kill him. And it's not as though Steve doesn't have anybody he could try to get revenge over, you know, over someone's death. By the end of his first solo movie, he believes that Bucky is dead. And in fact, he could have easily tried killing the guy who fired the shot that sent Bucky flying out and only managing to grab onto the, the wall of the, the train, you know. But he chose not to. And even if you're in favor of revenge, it was Carly who knocked Lamar into the pillar, not her right hand. So he takes revenge by killing and is even okay with killing someone not responsible for the death he's avenging. And and the guy even says, it wasn't me. You know, and, and you know, one of the at least one of the Easter egg people said he, he went full shaggy. That's a yeah, good reference. I like that. I like the very status quo changes in this episode. By the end of this episode, we don't know where Zemo is, but it's, of course, not a surprise that he managed to outmaneuver his arrangement with the two titular characters, and once given the chance, he destroyed all the serum he could get to. I mean, we don't know exactly what Sam and Bucky would have done, but, I mean... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain what exactly they would have done, but there's a there's a decent chance that the you know certainly Zemo doesn't trust them to destroy it. He doesn't pocket it and then go to them and say let's destroy it. He destroys it by himself. And, you know, the Dora Milaje are working on tracking down Zemo. John Walker has tarnished Captain America's legacy, and either he's going to keep moving in that direction, or he's going to accept that he's made a mistake, hand over the shield, possibly even directly to Zan. I have a really bad feeling that he's going to go in the wrong direction of those two. John says in this episode that the things he and Lamar did in Afghanistan to earn those medals were not right, which does hint that he's willing to do the wrong thing if someone encourages him to do so, and he has been encouraged to be a strong force as Captain America, you know, like, you, you could say that the, the, like, oh, but, you know, he, he regrets it now, he did still do three things, you know, the, the, like, you don't get three medals for one thing, he, there were at least three different things that he did that he got medals for, you know. Now, let's see. I suppose, I don't know, is there a chance that he was given the three medals in so quick succession that he didn't know he would be getting medals? I mean, he probably... I mean, you can refuse a medal, can't you? You can, like, make a thing of, I don't believe I deserve this medal. He didn't do that, so... <clears throat> Let's see. So, yeah, in the comics, Lamar is not killed off so early. So... 
one second. So, of course, people who read the comics did not expect him to die this early, and so unceremoniously. So, it may, you know, I mean, he, it's not quite like, you know, Tony's sacrifice in Endgame. You know, that's like a, you know, it's, it's given some weight, but it's mainly, it's a, you know, one, one of the Easter egg people said that he was basically fridged. I can't really argue with that. That's kind of true. But but yeah, you know, it made for a very effective shocking moment, similar to how Crossbones was killed early in Civil War. Both times we expected the character to live much longer based on the comics, and both times the death carries a lot of weight, which let's be honest, there are a lot of deaths in the MCU that don't carry weight. Usually there are completely you know, anonymous hordes of enemies, like an army of aliens or robots. I appreciate that they do make an effort to make it matter when it's major characters, and yeah. And actually, you know, in the comics, in the Civil War comic, the... Do I... Okay, tell you what. If you don't want to hear spoilers for the comic Civil War, mute and skip ahead until you see me a little man takes me here. So... In the comic Civil War, I think it's at the very end, and he does get better. St uh, Crossbones kills, assassinates Steve Rogers, so we didn't expect him to die. You know, yeah, we we might you know since they're doing Civil War, we might have expected he would maybe not be successful, but at least would try to assassinate Steve and. He does try to kill Steve, so it is, you know, it's it's a good compromise. No more spoilers for the comics. When Sam is about to go talk to Carly, he stands and patiently waits for the service to be over, similar to how Steve listened in on the veteran support meeting in Captain America 2, which was also about Sam trying to relate to some to people with trauma, trying to help them cope. And in this episode. Zemo says that Super Soldier Serum is inherently supremacist. You can't go for that kind of thing without believing that you and your people deserve more than other ethnicities, which would make Carly a hypocrite, since if things wouldn't be better, they would just be different, as Sam puts it. Someone else would be at the bottom of society, someone other than refugees, which is the problem that Carly is trying, you know, she's trying to make the world better for refugees, but, you know, with... If she is actually a supremacist, you know, then, yeah. Then then she's just trying to make things better for a specific group of people. You know, that is, that is inherent to supremacist ideology. And I think that was everything I had. It was, def it was everything I had written down. Let's see. The... think so yeah so yeah the the yeah really excited to see what's going to happen in the last two episodes i am a tiny bit worried that they do have a lot of different plot strands going so you know that some of those in one division some of the plot strands that, you know, I was personally okay that they didn't deal with absolutely everything, but a number of the plot strands, I mean, they boiled down to, well, you know, maybe this person in the sitcom is someone powerful in real life, and then we just find out, you know, no, they're just, they were a person who lived in Westview before the sitcom thing started, and that was... You know, that was able to wrap up a lot of plot strands that seem, you know, and they can't do that on this because it's not, a, we're not seeing a, you know, there's no show within a show. This, what the show depicts is the, it's, is what's happening in the MCU. So I'm, I'm a tiny bit worried that, but I mean, I've, I've been very happy with the MCU. There's, there's very little of the MCU that I have actual problems with. So, you know, fingers crossed. And yeah, that is it for this time. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I'll catch you next time.